made it back to Sonora Pass. It took three vehicles and a couple hours, but I made it. Um, back at the little roadside park here and cooking up some sausages with the Sonora Pass resupply folks. And once I've had uh, my uh, sausage and eggs, then I'll head back out on the trail. But for now, it's time to relax and eat uh, before I get back uh, to the dirt. It's 620 on day 80. I'm about eight miles out of Sonora Pass. I think I started around one o'clock. Took three hitches to get there. Uh, just wandering through the woods, really. I've got it. Seems like all to myself here. I haven't seen anybody in a long time. Origami went by earlier. Forest went by before him. That's the only two folks I've seen. A couple day hikers messing around. Me, I'm just wandering through the woods. Just had dinner, beef stew. I think my gas canister ran out of gas. Or almost is out. <coughs> I guess I'll be cold soaking my dinners until I get to Tahoe. Buy another gas canister. Thought I had more. Oh well. I'll go as far as I can tonight. For a set camp. Down in this valley. Started off with like an 800 foot ascent. Now it's mainly a descent. Going downhill. If I keep going, which I might do. I'll uh, end up going uphill here at the very end of the day. That's fine. It's pretty in here. Not cold, not hot. A little bit of a breeze. Still got mosquitoes though. Not so bad that I have to uh, wear the net, but I have sprayed. I bought a $10 spray can of cancer before I left town. It's 100% um, DEET. So, I may get cancer, but I'll uh, run off a few mosquitoes too in the process, so it'll be totally worth it. Typically, this is the kind of stream that I get water from, but even 
with this I have to be careful because it has the potential for Giardia as well. You would think that this pile of rocks been poured out here by dump trucks. It's nice kind of a line. They just it just stops right here, but it's from this mountaintop. It's apparently just crumbling away. It's just a big old pile of rocks. I like to see that on a time exposure over years, how it sheds them. But they just come down here and then here it just stops in a line and then here's you know grass pine cones down here yeah it just sort of comes to an end right there slowly making its way down the mountain that's neat Spent the first five miles this morning traipsing around in the woods and uh, just now came across this nice mini meadow. It appears there's a forest fire there north of us. I don't know if it's gonna come into play or not. I'll, we'll know more when we get up close to it. Well, there's no sign of that fire now. I think it's, it's on over uh, on the other side of that gap. So I believe I'm heading west of it. Hopefully I'll stay clear of that. After not seeing smoke for several hours, there's the smoke from the forest fire. The trail took me northwestward, and I believe I'm west of the fire right now. So I've never really gotten a good look at it. It's always been on the other side of a mountain, and hopefully it'll stay that way. there's an issue with that wildfire and there's some sort of uh, an evacuation going on it's a mandatory thing and here's the note that I found taped to this uh, PCT post as I was coming out of here at uh, Ebbets Pass Ebbets Pass is this little road here it goes up there and um, the note says Mandatory evacuation due, <coughs> due to wildfire. Do not continue. Contact Caltrans at top of highway at Ebbets Pass to arrange for a ride. This is the Alpine uh, County Sheriff's Office stuff. So, um, I'll just... Hit make my way to the top of the pass. There must be some sort of a emergency phone booth or something up there because there's no phone number and I, I've tried self service. There's anything out here. So I'll wander on up there and uh, call them and see what's going on. Well, I'm getting up here. Looks like the road is blocked off. 
by uh, there's folks in hard hats and vests so we'll just uh, see what we got well I didn't evacuate I did go up and talk to the Cal trans guy and he was worthless the note from the sheriff's department said there was a mandatory evacuation and to talk to the Cal, you know, California Transportation uh, representative up there to arrange for a ride. And that guy said, he's not arranging rides. He's not evacuating anybody. That's just not what he does. And he doesn't know why the Sheriff's Department put that there. And they didn't tell him nothing. Uh, so basically, it's just a guy standing there with his hands in his pocket. And uh, he's got a vest and a hard hat. So he's like a five foot six orange cone in the road. That's about how much help I got out of that guy. So some sort of miscommunication between the sheriff's department and, and uh, Caltrans. I don't know what they normally do when there's a fire, but... So there's no place to evacuate to. I, I, there's just a, a little road there, and there's no town. There's nothing. It's about 20 miles to anything. Uh, there was another couple up there yakking away with the guy. I don't know why. Maybe they're just, you know, rubbernecking. But they didn't offer, well, we can take you back. We're going back. So um, Chewy and was it Yellow Jacket? Or the guy, his dad, formerly uh, face plant. Um, they decided they were going to press on. And uh, when I talked to the Caltrans guy, he said, uh, I said, how many people have come by so far? He said about 8 to 12, and all of them but one had kept going up the trail. Um, so I decided that since there's... I mean, if the guy would have said, oh, yeah, I, I range, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the one you need to talk to about getting a ride to town and, you know, this is all, you know, evacuated and closed and yada, yada, but he offered no help. I didn't know which way to go. Uh, he said one guy did ev evacuate, but all, all I all saw of him was just he walked down the road just by himself and God knows where he is now. So that's not much of a plan. Uh, so I decided I'd uh, press on too. The ro the fire, once I got a good look at it, it's hard to tell exactly where it was because we're always deep in the woods or in valleys and, and it was obscured in, behind other mountains. It looks to be in, it was in the 10 to 30 degree azimuth, so like north, northeast. And the PCT goes sort of northwest for a while, then north and back to the northeast and back in the vicinity. But it looks like it always stays west of the f fire, the current fire. Um, it could, you know, move, change. The wind could do stuff. So as long as it stays where it is or moves east, I'm good to go. I haven't met anybody heading back south who's doubled back and said, nope, can't make it. So uh, tomorrow will will uh, uh, will be interesting. Um, I mean, tonight if I smell smoke, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm heading south. I'm gonna uh, pull up stakes and get out of here quick. Uh, but it's a long ways away, and everything between here and there is all green. So it's not like it's just a tinder box just waiting to go. It's everything's lush green here. So I'm not quite sure what's burning over there. Today I did 24 miles. That's the most I've ever done. Just sort of happened. Uh, no major, you know, plenty of ups and downs, but no, no, no big ones. <coughs> Just, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. So, and super windy. Today was crazy windy in uh, a couple of the saddles and coming down. There was a lot of scree. Uh, on on the one section of the trail, and I just would hunker down every now and then because big squalls of wind would come in and not try to knock me off, but it, you know, I had to pay attention. So uh, I'm glad to have that done. I was glad to get down low and down into a valley and off the that uh, off the top. 
anyway, so I'm in uh, in my tent, and uh, I've eaten a ton of Oreos. I hope bears don't like Oreos.